suddenly got this urge for a grilled cheese sandwich and, of course, a glass of milk. <laughs> Mary! Mary, I'm glad I caught you alone. Are you busy? Uh, <laughs> well, Phil, as a matter of fact, Oh, I... good. Uh, Rhoda, close the door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bess is outside with her young man, and they're going to the school dance. And she's so proud of him. I just know how much she'd like you to meet him. Oh, sure, I'd love to meet oh. him. Oh, and uh, Mary, when I bring them in, uh, don't make a big fuss over them. Don't treat them like children. They're not children, you know. They're little people. I would love to meet your little people. Why don't you just slide them under the door? <laughs> Mary, you know what I mean. Young people find it. Uh, embarrassing to be gushed over. It's so patronizing. You promise me you won't gush. I promise. I won't gush. I cross my heart. No All right, I'm going to bring them in now. You can come in now. They're coming in now. <laughs> Here they are. Hi, Aunt Mary. Hi, Aunt Mary. Hi, oh, Bess, what a cute little, uh, nice, good dress. <laughs> Thanks, Aunt Mary. This is my friend, William Campbell, Mary Richards. Hello, William. Nice to meet you. You didn't tell me your aunt was such a beautiful woman. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Isn't he cute? And so polite. Hi, Eric. Rhoda Morgenstern. Beautiful Aunt Mary's good-natured friend. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Aren't they the cutest little things you ever saw? <laughs> this? Miss Richards, best mention you work in a newsroom at WJM. Uh-huh. Well, I'm very interested in news. Oh, well, I'll tell you, anytime you want to, come down to the station and look around, huh? Thanks, I like that. Okay. Everybody, I am late. I'm sorry. I gotta run. I gotta meet my date downtown in five minutes. Well, if Miss Richards is going downtown, maybe she could drop us off and save you a trip. Oh, Mary? Yeah, sure. I don't see why not. Well, you two have a wonderful time now. Remember, there's no curfew. Whenever you two decide to come home, it's all right with Lars and me. Yes. <laughs> Bye. And I'll be in the parking lot at 9.45. Well, here you are again, Rhoda, watching the girls go off on their dates. Oh, I know what you mean, Phyllis. I have to go up those stairs to that lonely room and spend a, an unexciting evening with a book. Oh. Whereas you get to spend an exciting evening with Lars, watching him try to wake up his leg. <laughs> Good morning. Well, good morning. Remember you told me I could come down to the newsroom and look around? Yeah, right, I did. It's just that I didn't expect to see you so soon. You really look beautiful this morning. Well, thank you. Don't you have school today? Nope, they let me off. Well, I'm going to do a story for the school paper, you know, all about television news program. Uh-huh. So they let me off. Oh, well, well. Well, this is the newsroom. Oh, not much going on right now. Did you have a nice time last night? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was okay. <laughs> you know, I don't think it was right of your date to have you meet him like that. I mean, I may be old-fashioned, but the right thing to do would have been to pick you up at your apartment. You know, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> guess we're both old-fashioned, huh? Yeah, I guess. That guy you were out with last night, did you see him a lot? No. Boy, you really do an in-depth interview, don't you? Morning, Mayor. Hi, Murray. Coffee's ready. Ah, oh, terrific. Murray, I would like you to meet William Campbell. William is doing a story on the newsroom for a school paper. Well, I'm always pleased to meet a fellow journalist. Thank you. May I have a cup of coffee? Yeah, sure. How do you take it? Black, with sugar. How many sugars? Six. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Now what are you going to do? Now what am I going to do? I guess I'm going to sharpen a pencil. You know, you really could learn a lot from Murray about news writing. I mean, around here, news writing is one of the most important jobs. That's right. If it weren't for me, people would turn on the 6 o'clock news, see a grown man with a silly look on his face saying, Good evening. I'm... I'm... Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, hi, Sonny. <laughs> Any fresh coffee? 
Uh, yeah, Ted, I'll get you some. Sit down, Miss Richards, I'll get it. Well, thanks, cute kid. How many sugars do you take? Six. Ted, <laughs> I'd like you to meet William Campbell. William's doing a story on the newsroom for a school paper. Oh, really? Well, pleased to meet you, Bill. I hope you don't mind my calling you Bill. No. Good. Well, Bill, it all started in a 5,000-watt radio station in Fresno, California. <laughs> you! Me? Yeah, you, kid, in my office. Uh, Mr. Grant... Not now, Mary. I'll wait till you finish with your meeting, Bill. <laughs> Mr. Grant won. Well, either I shape up or I'm fired. <laughs> I thought I was a male boy. That's Lou. Everybody under the age of 20 looks alike. <laughs> Mary, will you handle this? Yes, sir. Mail. All right, I'm late. <laughs> You're not the male boy. No, Mr. Grant, this is the male boy. Come here, kid. Uh, listen, um, about uh, that in there, about uh, what I said, uh, you know, if, if I sounded a little tough, well, that was uh, because, uh, here's a buck. <laughs> anyway, the turning point in my career came one night when I heard the lonely clickety-clack of the railway train. It seemed to be saying to me over and over, go into television, go into television. <laughs> and then the train said, and you'll be bad, and you'll be bad. <laughs> He wouldn't let me out of his sight the entire day I cannot figure it out, man He met you and I at the same time And yet he picked you That's sort of sweet, though, I mean, He helped me off with my coat He opened doors for me He kept telling me how beautiful I was You know, I had somebody in love with me like that once Freckles, chocolate stains on his face Runny nose he was a stockbroker. William! It's me, Mary. William. Mary, William, ho, ho. First name basis already, huh? Hello. Hi. You really look beautiful tonight. Ah, uh, this is where I came in. <laughs> see you later, Mayor. Nice uh, to see you again. Rhoda, Bye. must you go? That's very nice of you, Mayor, but you know what they say. Three's a crowd. <laughs> Besides that, I can tell you two young people would like to be alone. <laughs> I was in the neighborhood, and there was something I felt I had to tell you. Oh? Mary, I lied to you. I'm not on the school paper. I just use that as an excuse to spend a day with you. Did you forgive me? Well, uh, yeah. I don't see why not. Good. Can I come in for a minute? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Come on in. I also remember you told me you liked a good conversation. So I thought maybe tonight we could just sit around and get to know each other better. <laughs> Cigarette? Uh, no, uh, thanks. I, I don't smoke. Neither do I. Uh, well, then, I guess we won't be needing these, will we? Tell me, Mary, why haven't you ever gotten married? Oh, just never met the right guy, I guess. But you have lived with somebody before, though. <laughs> ice cream. What? Ice cream. That's what we need is some ice. I haven't had any dessert, and I bet you haven't had your dessert either, right? So why don't I just go down to the store and get some ice cream, and I'll have Beth come up here, and then we'll all have some ice cream. Beth! <laughs> feel like going. Bess, sit down. There's something we have to talk about. What do we have to talk about? Bess, I like you. Thanks. I like you, too. Only there's somebody I've met that I like better, and I don't think we ought to go out with each other anymore. <laughs> I know who it is. It's that new girl, isn't it? Carmela Corcioni. The one with the big sweaters. <laughs> You're never going to get it by taking wild guesses. Is she in our homeroom? 
No, she's not in our homeroom. Is she in our class? No. Is she older? Yes. Older. Does she have brown hair? Yes. Is she in the 10th grade? 10th grade, no. Dory Daniels? No. Does she go to our school? No. Do I know her? Yes. Older, older. Does it go to our school? Brown hair? William, what are you doing in Aunt Mary's apartment? Nothing, I was just talking to her. You have eight questions left. It's Aunt Mary, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Mary. You know something, you're really bananas. We don't think so. Aunt Mary is past 30, and she's taller than you are. I don't think height should be a barrier if two people like each other. Aunt Mary doesn't like you, you're a kid. You're really bananas, you know that? There's nothing you can do about it. Oh no? Well, Mr. Bananas, I can tell your mother. <laughs> Ice cream, everybody, the flavor of the month, orange marmalade. No, thank you, Aunt Mary. I don't feel very much like ice cream. What's the matter with Bess? I think she's upset. What's wrong? I told her about us. <laughs> us? <laughs> Came for you when you were at lunch. Oh, look at that. <laughs> They're from William. <laughs> oh, you mean that nice kid who was writing that story for his school paper? He's not on his school paper. Oh. Who's not on his school paper? That nice kid who was here yesterday. What? The one I spent four hours with telling my whole life story to? <laughs> I'm going to report into his school. Who sent the flowers? The nice kid. Well, if he thinks I'm going to forgive him just because he sent me flowers. He sent the flowers to me. See, he's got kind of a crush on me. Oh, what am I going to do? I don't want to hurt his feelings. He's such a sweet boy. Say, Mayor, I was watching a rerun of Ozzie and Harriet the other night, and Ricky had the same problem. Huh? He fell in love with his high school English teacher. Ozzie took him into his den. You know that den that he had? Ozzie told him, he said, Ricky, in this world, when you cheat, you're only cheating yourself. Ricky was cheating with his high school English teacher? <laughs> must have gotten that mixed up with the episode where Ricky had David do his homework for him. Well, anyway, it all worked out in the end. Of course, I don't think it'll be so easy for you, Mayor. That's right, man. You don't have an Ozzy to talk to. Any calls? No, no calls. Say, Lou, you ever have a crush on anyone older when you were a kid? Yeah. Mel Lott. <laughs> no. A girl. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Once. She was a senior, and I was a freshman. Her name was Margaret. She didn't even know I was alive. Isn't that funny how I almost forgot that? Yeah. Margaret. She had this golden hair. <laughs> Color of buttercups. And eyes as clear and blue as a fresh mountain lake. She had the best rear end I ever saw. <laughs> so firm you could crack an egg on it. That's about as tender as we'll ever see her. <laughs> Newsroom. Yeah, she's here. Hold on. Is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you date anyone else who calls me, sir? <laughs> Hello, William. Yes, it's me. Uh-huh. Well, William, I really don't think that we sh... Lunch? Well, all right, uh, I think... Maybe it is a good idea for us to have a talk. All right, fine. See you then. Goodbye. Mary's got a boyfriend. Mary's got a boyfriend. Can you imagine William?
Jim is taking me to La Parisienne for lunch. <coughs> well, it's not that expensive, Mayor. You know what kind of place it is? Out front, they have this big sign that says, over two million escargots sold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just figured that lunch was as good a place as any to get this whole thing cleared up. Yeah. Are you expecting someone? Uh-uh. You don't suppose it's him? Mm. Worse, it's her. <laughs> uh, Rhoda. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to speak to Mary on a personal matter. Go ahead. Well, Phyllis, if the personal matter is William, Rhoda knows. Mary, uh, I came here tonight to assure you, before this trivial situation gets blown up out of all proportion, that you have nothing to feel guilty about. In fact, Bess and Lars and I all agree that it is really the best thing that could have happened. Uh, what's the best thing that could have happened? Well, that William chose you over Bess. Oh, oh Willis, <laughs> come on now. Is that the face of the other woman? Rhoda, speak not of what you know not of. <laughs> <laughs> After all, Mary, you may be the first rival Bess ever had, but you're certainly not going to be the last. Phyllis, I am not Bess's rival. I think Lars said it for all of us when he said to Bess, Bess, you get over it. <laughs> of course, he meant so much more than that. That's Lars. He always speaks not of what he knows not of. <laughs> A rather similar experience in high school. There was this boy that I liked very much. And then there was this, <laughs> this other girl. Little Miss Personality, bright, cheerful. Perky. Perky. Oh, you know the type. A, a girl not unlike you, Mary. Oh, I'll admit she had a kind of surface charm, but no real depth. So, naturally, I was hurt when he invited her to the prom instead of me. But I, I got over it. Oh, there were a few schoolgirl tears, a few dark nights of the soul. It wasn't easy accepting the fact that I was the only girl in the, my senior class who didn't have a date to her own prom. I was so ashamed I, I didn't have a date. I told my father I was meeting this boy at his house. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? And that night, I put on my green organdy formal evening gown and my purple orchid wrist corsage that I had sent to myself. <laughs> and I went out alone to the movies. I sat through three showings until it was time to go back to my house where I cried myself to sleep. Well, sure was fun talking about it. <laughs> You might say, I feel like a million. I'll see you later. I gotta go wash my hair. <laughs> and for dessert, <clears throat> may I suggest our pastry tray? You don't have orange marmalade ice cream, do you? She seems to like that. No, I'm sorry. Okay, the pastry tray. I promise you, you will have everything just the way you want. Thank you. And could I talk to the violinist now, please? Certainly. Maurice? Maurice, this young man would like you to play something for him and his young lady. With pleasure. May I suggest? <laughs> yeah, that'll be great. Here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, may I help you? Uh, yes, I'm supposed to meet somebody here. Mary! Oh, right this way. Thank you. You really look beautiful this afternoon. <laughs> William, 
I want you to know that the only reason I came here this afternoon... Here, it's for you. William, I don't want you buying presents for me. I can afford it. I got a great paper out. Aren't you gonna open it? Oh, William, look! That! It's beautiful, thank you. It's not real gold. Oh. Shall I help you put it on? Sure. Uh, Mary, is it too late to ask you to the movies Saturday night? <clears throat> William, I cannot go to the movies with you. Friday? No! Monday? I'm usually not allowed on school nights. William, no! <laughs> it's Bess, isn't it? Just because you're friends with Bess, you don't want to go out with me. It has nothing to do with Bess. Is there somebody else? William, there doesn't have to be somebody else. William, doesn't it bother you that I am 15 years older than you are? Well, I, I try not to think about that part. Well, you're going to have to. What difference does it make what people say? William, it's just not going to work. Why? Because. <laughs> Mary, I want you to know that it's not just physical. Let me, let me, let me explain something to you. Um, you, William, are a boy. And I, Mary, am a grown-up lady. And you see, gr grown-up ladies just do not go out with little boys. So you're a grown-up. Big deal. That's right. It is a big deal. Well, who said? I said. Well, you're really lousy, you know? William. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have told me you liked me. William, please stop kicking the table. You're going to spill the water. <laughs> listen. Listen to me. These things sometimes happen. Sometimes two people meet, and they're just not right for each other. And it's nobody's fault. William, can't you understand that? I mean, William, look, I, I can't fall in love with every man I meet, can I? Hmm? Yeah, I guess not. Good. Now, sit up straight and eat your lunch. It looks delicious. <laughs> Mary, you know, I really liked going with you. Thanks. Me too. Who is it? It's me, Beth. Come on in. Aunt Mary, I'd like you to meet Roger Henshaw. Roger, this is Mary Richards. Hi, Roger. Hello. We're going to the movies. Oh, great. I hope you have a wonderful time. We better get going now. Okay. It was nice meeting you, Roger, and I hope I'll see you again with Bess sometime. <laughs> okay, uh, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Aunt Mary. What? He didn't even notice you. Great. 